this is not there in any textbook in the world. You will not find this. This is my creation over 10, 15 years. Uh, I, when I went to study at IIM Ahmedabad, we learned decision tree analysis. So in management school, they teach you to have a decision tree, which is based on various variables. And I'm going to teach you those variables today on how you can understand, how you can understand how to learn from uh, a supplement at the end of the day. The checkpoints. The first one, does this person need a supplement? Yes or no? Now, how do you, how do you make that decision? You, you know, somebody, this is what happens in seminars. Sir, what is your opinion of whey protein? Sir, what is your opinion of whey, HME? Sir, what is your opinion of creatine? Can I give it to my 14 year old son? I'm like, so you want a yes or no from me? But my yes or no is based on what? My yes or no is based on the following questions. Sir, do I know your gender, male or female? Do you know male or female? The, the, the requirement of giving supplements changes. A simple example, a woman who's undergoing menstruation might require more supplementation than a woman or not undergoing uh, 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 menstruation or a woman undergoing menstruation versus a man for iron, for example, a woman undergoing menstruation, yes, for supplement iron to her for a man may not be required. So do I know gender? Do I know height, weight? BMI, because all of this gives you direction on the macros, protein, carbs, and fats. And your RDA, if you know this, RDA is recommended dietary allowance, is calculated sometimes on the weight. So how much of vitamin C can be given to a person is based on the milligrams per kg body weight. But then, you know, they say, oh, average population is 60 kg. So this should be the RDA dosage. But you can go a step further and actually predict it. I believe in the next four to five years, we will have accurate software. Once you input your data, they, it will be able to tell you all the possible levels of food that you have. At the next level, Blood test analysis will be done like the AcuCur. Good morning, Mr. Ryan Fernando. Kindly insert your finger into the hole. We will do a blood test analysis for you this morning. This will be in 2025. Good morning, Mr. Fernando. Today you are showing low levels of B12. We recommend that you eat some non-veg or take your daily multivitamin of XYZ. And then 30 years later, it will be, good morning, Mr. Fernando. We have just injected you with the right amount of supplements. Have a great day. This could be the future. But till such time, I would still believe that I would not want to get it via my finger. I would love to eat a fruit, a vegetable, my food, and get it via how evolution has designed it. Okay. Is there a blood test report? Um, you know, as a clinical biochemist, I always tell people that a, a blood test is a crystal ball gazing into your client or your future. It's very, very simple. You know, it's like if somebody comes to me with a blood test and I take a ferritin, an iron, a transferrin saturation and iron binding protein, okay? You immediately, immediately are able to predict what this person has done in the past. And if they don't do anything correctly to change those bad or deranged parameters, what they're going to be in the future. So blood test reports is instrumental in helping me design the supplement strategy. So a lot of people asked me on Facebook, uh, you know, what authorizes you to conduct a course or everything? The course is to design uh, an experiential learning of mind to you. So what I'm trying to say to you is there's no rocket science behind this. It's very, very simple. You want to give an iron supplementation. Okay. Is there an iron deficiency? As a dietitian, as a nutritionist, as a trainer, as a teacher, whatever, whoever's attending the seminar, a simple blood test will give you direction. Again, I insert an asterisk or a disclaimer here. Supplements should be prescribed by a competent authority. Technically, doctor. Technically, nutritionist. Technically, dietitian. Technically, physiotherapist, maybe. But uh, supplements are in the food domain and I do strongly believe that it should be done by the competent authority. But I am going to tell you how you should flow your decision tree and then you can decide whether or not to prescribe supplements. All right, so let's go forward. I'm going to start off with the first one, which is what? Okay, uh, the what is based on the following questions. You need to ask the gender. By the way, Gayatri, my assistant uh, training head, is going to be sending all of you a template uh, by the end of the discussion 
she's going to send you a template. This template you can use in your practice. You can ask these questions and sequence to help you make a decision to prescribe a supplement. Uh, uh, for, for those of you are, who are working with me on, in this, who have worked in the past with me, you will always see that that, that uh, template is in my head because I've been doing it for 25 years. So it's in my head. I just have a sheet. I just put it out in, in, in virtual reality in front of me and I'm going boom, 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 boom. So if somebody asks me a question, they'll see me blank for a second because they're seeing me blank for a second because my decision tree is going like that. Tuck, 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 tuck. It's moving everything all around in the what, why, how, when, which. Tuck, tuck, tuck. I'm sorting it. Today, I'm teaching you how the brain works in terms of making those decisions to you. So the first question that goes in my head is what? Okay, it's a gender. What is the age? Is it 8 to 18? Is it 18 to 59? Is it above 60? So different ages may or may not be allowed to prescribe supplement or the condition may aggravate, not aggravate, condition may disappear. So age is very important because from each one of them, another decision tree flows off, okay? anthropometric measure measurements like fat percentage blah 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 symptoms mild or major you know somebody comes to you we'll talk about symptoms today but uh, let me not judge it somebody some some of my, my, my dietitian like sir he has dandruff and i'm like okay he has dandruff what is the most important symptom on the other side the person is constipated and has not does not go to the toilet properly and feels grumpy all the time the more important symptom is constipation, but you're looking at dandruff. Is supplement needed? And uh, you know, you, you ask all of these questions. So we go to the next one, which is the why. Okay. Now, the why is basically, why do I want to give a supplement to this person? So what I do is I ask a lot of questions. So it could be clinical questions. It could be blood test question. It could be everything. But I just wanted to do one part of how I ask questions. So let's assume, let's assume over here. I found out this person and they have dry eyes, IBS, farting, dry skin, you know, or all of all of which would be the top three choices, which you would treat first, which would be the top three choices that you would treat. This is how you have thought your decision tree in terms of what would you treat first? Because if you do not have that logic, then you can't go to then deciding what supplement to give in which condition because you can give a supplement for each one of these. You can give a supplement for farting. You can give ginger. You could give uh, jeera, ajwain, sof, which is fennel seeds. Uh, uh, what is the other words in English? Anyway, we'll figure this out and we'll add it. But in IBS, you could give so many things for IBS. You could give uh, zinc, you could give collagen, you could give probiotics, you could give curcumin, uh, you could give licorice, you could give uh, tulsi, you could give amla, you could give ashwagandha. There's hundreds of things that would help in, in IBS, but which one would you give? Before you, which one you would give is like, which one would I treat first? Okay. So that's very, very important. So I hope everyone's seen what uh, about 160 people have polled. Uh, there are 220 of you. There will be some more polls uh, coming in in the later lectures. But this is very, very, very interesting. Now, let me tell you. Let me just close my poll. Okay. And this is how I would treat it. IBS, delayed menses, acne muscle soreness, dry skin, dry eyes, runny nose, dandruff, farting last. Here's the thing. And let me tell you how my logic worked on this. Why I would go with IBS? Because that would be the reason would come person would come to you. Why delayed menses? Because it's telling you that there is a problem. IBS, hmm, that means nutrition absorption is not correct. Ovarian uh, health is not proper. So menses is getting delayed. Acne is an indication of some wrong food that is doing kujli in the body. Again, related to the top IBS. But why did I put acne above muscle soreness?